Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Callie. And I'm Bean. So today we we're going to talk to you. We saw Frozen 2. And we're huge Disney nerds. And so, yeah. We loved it. We it loved it a lot. so good. <laughs> we wanted to talk to you guys about it. Because we did talk about mm -hmm. the Lion King movie. We didn't care for that one. So we figured... We're not going to hate Frozen 2. <laughs> Might as well continue our Disney trend here. Indeed. indeed. So we did. <laughs> so, in case you live under a rock, Frozen 2 came out last month, and it's the sequel to the first Frozen, Let It Go, that whole thing. Yep. So this story, we more follow Elsa's journey in discovering where she got her powers from, mm -hmm. which is a really cool and visually stunning journey. It is amazing. They did so such an amazing job with the art in this movie. Oh, it was beautiful. It just you can you just got sucked in and I've noticed a lot with cartoons you either get sucked into it or you're just watching it. Mm -hmm. And this one definitely brought you into the story. You were invested in the story. So, mm. that was really awesome. I definitely think this one was a lot more emotionally draining mm -hmm. and emotionally captivating than yes. the first one. The first one we had a villain and we had all of that. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't really have a villain. It's more of a story about discovery and self-worth and self-love as well as family and mm -hmm. sisters and also letting go. Haha. -ha. <laughs> Pun not intended. Ha -ha. <laughs> it is definitely much more about family and it's definitely there is romance, but it's not at the front and center and it's so the romance that is included in this movie is shown to be one of the healthiest relationships I have seen in a Disney movie in a very, very long time. Anna Just, and Kristoff forever. It's, oh my gosh, it's so cute. And it's one of those where it is what it is and they kind of like keep going with their own lives. They don't shut down their lives just because of each other, which is awesome. They yeah. have, my favorite is still the family game nights. That just made me family so Family game happy. night scene <laughs> is hysterical. And just wonderful. It is. It's adorable. It is. So I think for this, we didn't have really anything that we hated about it. Um, besides like minor, very, very minor, very if I'm being miny. stingy yes. kind of thing. More if we're looking for something to dislike kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. So I will say my favorite thing in the entire world with this movie is show yourself. And that entire scene mm -hmm. at the yes. like near end of the movie, it's where Elsa finally figures out where her powers come from. She figures out the history of her family. And it's just so good. I love it. It's I love the song. I love her new <laughs> dress. I know, love her new look. I love everything. <laughs> it is it is a beautiful scene or set of scenes, I suppose. It's just so well done. It's amazing. And I have to say one of my favorite scenes is right before that actually cuz I love the um the nook, the the water horse, like the the amount of mythology that they took for this movie made my inner history nerd very happy, and it's amazing what they did visually with that. Oh yeah, a lot of, all of the elements were taken from Norse mythology, mm -hmm. and even, so we find this tribe called the North Uldra. The creators of this film actually met with the Sumi people, and they went and studied with them to learn about their culture, learn about how they can incorporate this tribal aspect to this movie accurately, mm -hmm. And have a positive um, image for these people. And I thought that was an amazing thing that they'd done. Because they could have gone so left field and done an awful job with the with the North Uldra. And it would have mm -hmm. ruined the story. It really would have. And because they had this aspect of it that just felt very cultural. And felt very much like this is how things are. Like Even at one point everyone t holds one shoulder of someone in front of them. It seemed very significant as to the culture and it embraced that and it showed that while Anna and Elsa might not be familiar with that, they were like, yeah, this is what it is. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. That's fine. And it really showed a lot of acceptance there and a lot of, well, this is how it is. Cool. Let's go. <laughs> so that was really refreshing as well. It was. And there was just enough with all of the seriousness. There was mm -hmm. the perfect amount of comedic relief. <laughs> that was Olaf. <laughs> And Sven. And Sven. And Sven. And Sven. <laughs> Olaf is like three in this, and he makes so many jokes about oh how he's goodness. getting older, and it's, I am living for his whole song, When I'm Older, about knowing oh. all the answers when he's an adult. Oh my god. 
was hysterical and exactly how I felt when I was like 10. Yep, but actually... Like, I'll is... know everything when I'm an adult. And as an adult, well, no. I know nothing. <laughs> I know less. I feel like I know less. <laughs> yeah, Olaf is definitely like a toddler slash child in this movie and he takes that and they just run they with roll it. with it's it it's amazing <laughs> it's so good i was dying it was yep. great his we song his song in the first movie i was like it's okay this one this one was just hysterical <laughs> and just i relate mm. to on way yep. too hard of a level <laughs> it's true Going with this, with the comic relief to another person that has a song in this movie is Kristoff. He gets his own, he gets his own song, and it's it really is a very sweet song yeah. in and of itself, and kind of allows Kristoff to have emotions as a male character, as a male love interest in this. Which movie. never happens. No, they're not allowed to have emotions, and he has emotions, and he sings about them in <laughs> very took, 1980s style. They took it from, the way they did the visuals is based on the music video to Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, mm-hmm. and it's glorious, mm-hmm. because it it's Kristoff and Reindeer. reindeer. <laughs> it's just French kiss. It's perfect. wonderful. It is. The, I guess one thing that I will say, I did feel that that, one, that aspect of Kristoff's plotline felt a little forced. Yeah, he felt, unfortunately, he felt very unnecessary he in this did. movie. I felt like they, they were just like, shoot, we need to give we Chris, need to give, we need to give Chris up something. <laughs> we need him in here. And they just threw in this, like, plot line, which, don't get me wrong, it was great, and I was here for it. And it was adorable. It was. It just didn't, it did mess up the flow a little bit for mm-hmm. me. But again, that's me being nitpicky. <laughs> I still loved it. It's true. So I guess we're going to go into a little bit of spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, highly recommend Go see it now. Go see it. If you haven't seen the first one, one, what's wrong with you? But two, go see it. Go see it. It's great. (laughs) Spoilers. Spoilery time. I don't know why we're doing this with our hands. So with spoilers, I think like the biggest thing that we find out in this is about their parents, that Mm -hmm. they actually weren't going to Rapunzel Land to go to the wedding. They they were actually trying to find Atahalan, which is the River of Knowledge, Mm -hmm. according to Norse Norse mythology. And that's where their ship ended up crashing and why they ended up dying. And that was a huge turning point for Mm -hmm. Elsa. Um, I think for Anna, too. For I, Anna, too, I yeah, think it was. It definitely because, was for both of them. Yeah, more so for Elsa, you're right. But yeah. I think for Anna, too, it was like, wait, something's wrong, something's different, yeah. and this shouldn't be here. It was, an, it was a very emotionally powerful scene. It was. Because one of the big things in this movie that they add is water has memory, which is actually a true scientific fact. It is. But... What they were able to do is with Elsa's power, she can use that memory to see what they what the water's last memory's form was. And we see, actually, her parents being swallowed up by the waves. Mm-hmm. And it's very emotionally hurtful. <laughs> and it's, yeah. It, tense. It, it's very intense in general. And... and it gets more and more tense after that, because then Elsa leaves Anna and makes her go away. In and the then boat. And then she goes to Atta Holland by herself, which she shouldn't have. No. But I don't think, but I think she also needed to go to Atta Holland by herself. I, it's a weird catch-22. <laughs> it, it's kind of a weird one right there, just because it's like, well, you sh- you broke a promise. What the hell, girl? Come on. And then, oh, wait, but that makes sense. Yeah. So Atta Holland being my favorite scene with Show Yourself. Mm-hmm. Elsa being the fifth element, which I feel like I should have seen coming. I I think I did see it coming to a point. I didn't. I read too much. I thought it was going to be her mom. That's true. I did actually think it was going to be her mom, but I thought it was going to be her mom who passed it on to her, which it kind of was. Kind of. It was her mom singing to her throughout the entire movie. Which I did not see. Yes. So it was her mom's voice calling her to Atta Holland, Mm -hmm. and Elsa got her powers because of a selfless act her mother made. And I thought that was a really cool way to introduce the magic with the elements Mm -hmm. and all of that. And I just, I just thought it was spectacularly done. It really and was. And I love it. And that scene is just beautiful and amazing. And I'm going to keep talking about it. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I guess for me, it was just like all the mythology, all the symbolism really just kind of stuck out to me as these people did their research. They, they did. They really did. They put a lot of effort into this movie. And it reminds me of Brave. 
Yes. Where they did a lot of research on the mythology of the cultures that they're talking about, which makes me very happy. Again, it makes my historical soul very happy. Very, very yeah. much so. But they really went into details. Like, down to they were drawing runes for the symbols of uh, the elements. Yes. Which, in Norse mythology, you go into, runes are a very big <clears throat> thing. So, I thought that was really cool. I think that was my favorite part, just personally, that they actually put in that much effort and yes. that much care into these movies. I guess the other big spoiler thing is Anna. Her character development goes very quickly. Yeah. So, when Elsa goes to Atahalan, she finds out that her grandfather actually tricked the North Oldra people in order to take their land. Rude. Yes, very rude. So, but one of the things about Atta Holland is if you go too deep to find the secrets, you'll be drowned. And Elsa ends up getting frozen solid, kind of like Anna did in the first movie. But whatever. So, mm -hmm. but she is able to get a message to Anna and shows Anna this image of their grandfather attacking the North Uldra when they have no weapons. And she just, she figures out that this dam that was supposed to be this big symbol of peace was actually a trick. Yeah. So she figures out that breaking the dam is what's going to save Arendelle and these people who are trapped in this enchanted forest. However, during that realization, because Elsa oh. died, Olaf died! <laughs> and I wasn't ready. I was not prepared for that. No. And then the snow started falling off. I saw the snow. There was, there's a seat. There's like this second where you see Anna's like, all right, here's our plan. This is what we got to do. And you see snow coming. And I'm my immediate like, like, no. Uh-uh. No. You can't do that to me. No. And no, it's okay. so sad. It is. See, it's... and Anna has, Anna doesn't have as much songs in this film as she does in the first one. Because mm -mm. this is a very Elsa-centered story which, which is, is fine. fine but she has this song about grief oh my goodness. that is so wonderful and so beautiful about how yes grief sucks and I don't mm -hmm. want to move but I have responsibilities mm -hmm. I have to do the next right thing and that's her yeah. big thing and that's what gets her off the floor because you can tell when we get back to Anna that she's been on the floor a while yeah, crying she which is fair yes because she just found out her sister died, and then Olaf died right in front of her, and it was not okay. And Olaf has basically, like, become her child. Yes. Like, she has basically adopted Olaf as their, like, little cousin or child or whatever. A little bit. And, and so, yeah. losing him, I think that just kind of hit her a lot, where it's like, suddenly, she is completely alone. Yes. She has to figure this out. No help from anybody. By herself. And no one's there for her comic relief. No one's there. No. And it's a very moving and very... I cry, I actually did cry during the song Me because <laughs> it is a very heartfelt song and it's very difficult. It like, is. What she went through, like, dude, that's tough. It's rough. <laughs> but she knew that she had to do the next right thing mm -hmm. and she goes, she destroys the dam. It's beautiful. One thing with destroying the dam is it will flood Arendelle. Now, all of the people who had been shoot out of Arendelle at the very beginning of the story... Mm -hmm. For this purpose, yep. the elements knew what needed to be done, so they got everyone safely out of Arendelle. But because she did this and she did the next right thing, Elsa is freed and is able to save Arendelle from being flooded, mm -hmm. which is just this, you with this great giant snowflake, it's glorious. Yes, it is. And saves Arendelle, and Anna is still reeling from losing. She thinks that, she still thinks that yeah, Elsa is gone. And now she is walking away Queen of Arendelle, mm -hmm. which is like, you can see that going in her thoughts and she's trying to figure this out, but then she sees a little snowflake. <laughs> and even the way she like holds herself changes as she's walking out of the forest and you just see her kind of like, oh shit. Yes. Yeah. Uh. I will say Elsa saving Arendelle, while it was beautifully done, I almost feel like it would have been... Um, not better, but it would have been more... But I almost feel like the castle itself could have been destroyed as a symbol for getting rid of everything that her grandfather had done. Because I believe 
that then they would like because then they'd rebuild and I was kind of yeah. thinking that that's what was going to happen afterwards and I'm, it didn't which is fine right I mean the way they but. explained it was because of what Anna did was such a selfless act as well Arendelle deserved to be saved mm -hmm. and not get destroyed so I did like that but I do kind of like the idea of rebuilding which mm -hmm. they did kind of do so at the end Elsa decides to abdicate mm -hmm. and Anna becomes queen yes and they build a statue to her father and mother who her mother was in North Uldra, and saved their father, mm -hmm. and it showed the a kingdom built from love, and it's just beautiful and it's glorious. Much then Elsa stays in the forest to protect the other elements and stay with the tribe, with mm -hmm. the North Uldra, which I think, I don't know, I don't really know how I feel about it. It's fine. It's fine. I, I like it because it shows a growth in Anna as well. It does. She's not ignored so much as she's given, like, she has done this big thing that's really important, so shes it's almost like she's rewarded for it. A little a bit. Sense. I also think that this kind of takes away from... One thing that I've always had an issue with Anna is her codependency. Yes. Is she is so codependent on mm -hmm. whether it was oh. Hans, Elsa, Kristoff. Even Olaf. Even Olaf. The codependency was very strong, and I think that her becoming queen was a big jump in her character development, showing that she can do things by herself, which mm -hmm. I thought was great. Because it was. She was always just Elsa's shadow, and mm -hmm. it even seemed like, even at the beginning of this movie, it was very it much... It was all about her protecting Elsa. Yeah. So making was... sure Elsa was okay. Mm -hmm. Making sure Elsa remembers that she needs to, that she wanted Anna around. And right. All of this, so... It's nice to see Anna want to do things herself, for mm. herself, yes. and not just for her sister. Because even the first movie was all Anna doing stuff for Elsa. It was. And so now it's Anna doing something for Anna. And it was great and glorious. Or Elsa doing something for Anna. 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 <laughs> it's just Anna. <laughs> and then Olaf wore pants, and that was weird. It was great. It was hysterical. It was kind of weird. It was great. Olaf came back. Everything was okay. Yes, Olaf is fine. Because water has memory. <laughs> Because he, he he was chilling behind the waterfall. The gale, the wind, <laughs> saved I, all of his snowflakes. By the way, the na <laughs> the fact that the name of the wind is Gale, it made me very happy because it's a gale. Yeah. Which is great. which is another word for wind. A breeze. Yes. Wind. So overall, in case you couldn't tell, we love this we movie. We really did. It's great. <laughs> the soundtrack is just perfect. We both actually downloaded it as soon as we left the theater. So I regret nothing. Nope. No regrets. None. At all. So, go see it. Now. We'll, we're posting videos every day. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll, we'll be here. We'll Don't worry about it. Go watch the movie. <laughs> so, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Right now we're posting every day, but typically we post every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And you can hit the little bell icon down below if you want to be notified when we post these videos. All of our links are, li are down below in the description. We have all of our Goodreads plus our Instagrams down there, so follow us there. We spend a lot of time in both places. Oopie. Yay. And we will see you guys in our next video. Bye. Bye.